hi all welcome again to uh, my youtube channel um, let's continue on this uh, topic of burnout at work now that we've learned about burnout uh, we've in, had an introduction to burnout we've looked at the signs we've looked at the consequences of burnout how about we cover now strategies and ways in which we can um, manage burnout let's avoid burnout so that you know we can enjoy work um, and uh, uh, strategically put in measures to try and um, prevent the work-related um, burnout. So one of the biggest things I must say that are important in managing burnout, number one, is boundary setting. It is very, very important to put in boundaries um, around things that you do from day to day to ensure that you're looking after yourself and that you're not getting burnt out. So some of the places that you need to put boundaries in are work life, um, in your work and in your life. And generally life is, you know, things away from workplace, your family, your friends, uh, the other things that you enjoy doing, your hobbies and stuff like that. Have a way of setting boundaries up to which what can I do? What can I bend? What can't I compromise on? What is so important to me that I cannot let go? Put boundaries in place, things like simple things like there's no way I'm going to miss my children's birthdays. There's no way I'm going to miss my children's school related activities. There's no way I'm going to miss one, two, three. This is important to me. And if this is happening, one simple thing like, you know, if, if you know, you're not like your life is, you know, Sundays are important to you. In Australia, you are paid way more if you work on Sunday. But I know that sometimes, you know, you may have to put in boundaries because, you know, um, it is important for you as a family, let's say, to go together to church or it is important to you as a family to do activities together on Sunday because that's when all of you are available and stuff like that. So it's important to put in boundaries and say, this is what I can do and this is what I cannot do. This is what I can compromise on and this is what I am definitely non-compromisable important to put boundaries in that place. The other thing that I have found, and I must say I've been a culprit of this, is overcommitting. When you overcommit in terms of like, I still find it so hard to say no. Like one of my recent shifts have been like crazy, crazy, crazy shifts because obviously I just, you know, just if somebody asks me, can we swap ships or something like that? And clearly I do not have something that I've set aside to, for us to do as a family and stuff like that. And let's say I'm not doing much. As much as I do not like that specific shift, I sometimes just end up picking the shift or over committing in terms of like, I will help you do this. I will help you do this. I'll help you do this. Let's even talk about in your home space. Like I will do, I will take my son to the barber. I will come back and do this with him. I'll come back and fix dinner. I'll come back and fold clothes. I'll come. That's over committing. You know, remember you're just one person and you only have 24 hours. And part of those 24 hours is for sleep. So your productive hours are relatively quite few hours. So it's very important to not over commit. It's okay to learn to say no to something. It's okay to learn to say, look, I'm not in a position to do that today. I'm not in a position to help you today. So that at the end of the day, you're protecting yourself from like always feeling tired, always feeling fatigued and feeling, you know, starting to get um, burnout um, in your workplace. The other thing is obviously um, be able to, you know, um, uh, sometimes I think one thing that I have found myself really guarding against is you know heart sink patients i don't know if you guys have heard about a heart sink patients heart sink patients are especially essentially those patients that come to you god i, I you know as a doctor you you naturally you just you know naturally you have this ability to just feel empathetic for people want to help them and stuff like that but sometimes you get patients that just you feel at the end of the console they've literally sucked everything from you and woe unto you if you're in general practice and you're a first second patient of the day they've literally sucked everything from you they will book in a one uh, um, a 10 minute appointment and then they will come in and they will stay almost one hour you know a lot of times you know um heart sink patients can can definitely and especially if you have a couple of them and a couple of them 
or just generally if you just have really really complex patients so many complex patients at the end of the day you may actually start feeling you know the pressures that are associated with managing and coordinating care for these patients i'm not saying you shouldn't i'm just saying maybe you need to manage expectations in the past what i have done is instead of seeing these patients weekly what i have done is i have scheduled the appointments every fortnight or every month and then that way they i know that um in two weeks time i'm going to go see dr anna or weekly on Monday, I'll go in to see Dr. Anna and I'm going to make a long appointment and I will be mindful of time. So we just get a compromise. We reach a compromise and we say, look, we are going to have a double appointment. We are going to stick within the double appointment. We will list what needs to be done immediately and we will list things that are likely that I'm likely to see you again and we go through. OK, so I've found that quite important, especially in the general practice um, uh, scenario. And um, and obviously that in the end has helped me also just look, you know, not look forward per se, but um, uh, when I see such patients, I don't feel that feeling of like, oh, yet again and stuff like that. I actually, you know, know that uh, we will meet up and I know that we'll do one, two, three. And by the end of the day, the patient is happy and I am happy. The other thing is obviously just be realistic. Be realistic with your expectations. And also be realistic in the um, in the responsibilities that you take up. If you're not in a position to take up some some tasks, just leave them. Okay. Number two that I find very important in what, which is one of the strategies that you need to apply to prevent, but at the same time to manage burnout is time management. Time management is very very key. I find like in my day to day, if you do not manage your time well, time is constant. It's always moving. It will not stop for you. And why I say this is, especially if you're like, let's say you're an after hours doctor. Time is trickling along. You've got a couple of reviews, five, six reviews. My advice will be prioritize your tasks. Prioritize what is urgent, what is emergency, what can wait, what cannot wait. Okay. Once you do that, then see if you can delegate some tasks. See, like let's say on your job list, you have a chest pain, you have a patient that has delirium, you have a patient that need a cannula for IV antibiotics, you have a patient that needs some pain management, and let's say, what's the fifth one? You've had a patient that, um, that uh, is upset their consultant has not come in. And you have five reviews at the same time as an after hours doctor. My go to would be which one is most urgent in terms of prioritization of my task obviously the chest pain will come off as number one but then i will not see the chest pain and leave all the others hanging i will see do i have another colleague on that i will send to review this delirium and then i will call the nurse and the coordinator and say look hey i'm really swamped is there any chance you can try and put in that iv cannula before i come if you don't get it that's fine as soon as i finish i will come and and, and help okay and then i will say um how about you tell that patient that's not happy that their boss did not come in uh, tell them that look i have a few other um, urgent things to look at when i get a minute i will come in to see you or do you mind asking what their concerns are about and just let me know or speak to the boss directly and then obviously you know that one extra patient who i forget what it was a pain management you can always give like a quick phone order and say look Give this patient one, two, three, and as soon as I finish, I will come and assess the patient to see if their management, their pain is because of something organic or if there's something else I can do to help. And in that, you've done five tasks at the same time. This nurse number five is not going to be upset with you because you've sorted them out. Nurse number four will not be upset with you because you've sorted them out. And in the long run, you've prioritized, you've delegated, and you're not going to feel overwhelmed because remember the main thing that makes you feel overwhelmed is the pages will keep coming people will say call you they will complain about you that you did not see the patient on time they will have an attitude with you oh we've been waiting for you for two three hours you sent you multiple pages you haven't responded they'll give you the negative vibes you don't want that if you do that prioritize delegated that's done right so time management is very key and then obviously be 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 very realistic with things like you know deadlines and stuff like that goals and stuff like that and remember to take breaks very important you know if you have a busy shift if you have a long shift remember to take breaks it's okay to take breaks 
because um, and this is an area that I'm learning to do as well because sometimes you have a very very busy shift and one thing that I like about my colleagues especially my Caucasians colleagues they do not shy off from taking breaks however busy it is as long as you know you don't have like cut twos and cut ones like nobody's is imminently dying people take breaks here people will tell you I'm going for a break however busy it is I'm taking a short break I'll be back all right and this is something that i keep reminding myself that it's okay to take a break short break go do one two three take a you know toilet break take a tea break take um, a meal break and something like that and then quickly come back number three i must say self-care and um, hobbies is very very important you need to take time to care about yourself you know you need to take time to uh, exercise self-care self-care is very key Self-care, I cannot reinforce enough. I think I have a video on the you know, art of loving yourself, art of looking after yourself and stuff like that. For me, it's very, very important to take a moment and look after yourself. My mantra is, if I'm not here today, work will continue. People will continue. My hospital will continue. The only people that may actually be affected, although they will still continue, is probably my family. Okay, so I feel like self-care is important. If you need to exercise, exercise. If you need to have, ensure you have adequate sleep, ensure you're putting in the right food in, in your mouth. You know, your diet is okay. You get time to relax and do things. If you're a yoga person, do yoga. If you're a meditate person, to meditate, meditate. If you're a person that loves worship, worship. If you love to read the word, read the word. Find a way to relax and build up. If you're somebody that likes to journal as well, like myself, journal. Okay, do something away from work, like something that you really do enjoy. Engage yourself in a hobby that you do enjoy. Engage yourself in an interest away from work. Sometimes for me, one of the biggest things for me is just sitting down with my friends and having a chat and a laugh. You know, for me, that's more than, you know, going to these fancy places, you know, and, you know, you know, where else I do have a friend that just loves the sea. You know, she will do every sport that's related with water. Water sports is her thing. Okay, so, I mean, at the end of the day, find a way that will allow you to um, self-care, find a way that will allow you to look after you. And I always say, especially for busy working parents, working moms and stuff like that, sometimes you are overwhelmed, you come from work, then there are kids, you have to fix dinner. Take time, even if it's five, ten minutes uh, when you get home, in the car or whatever it is you know take time and just reflect and debrief on how your day's been okay it's okay it's okay to take a few minutes in the car it's okay to take you know um, go for a walk alone and stuff like that just do something that uh, will re-energize you and something that will will center your core a little bit more number four is for me one of the strategies to avoid burnout is support systems support systems is very very key you could have colleague support system for me the biggest is my family and friends okay my family and friends um are you know support systems so because sometimes you come from work you've been like up to here with cases you just want to vent they do not even understand the implications but just being able to bring it out talk it out you know say look today you know find a way you know to debrief and to to talk to people who care about you people that are not going to you know uh, to criticize you people that are not going to people that will embrace you knowing that you've had a difficult day and people that will look after you obviously the other thing that i've found myself using quite commonly is some online forums um, for me, I do just love my medical moms group. Sometimes I just go into there and that's on Facebook. I go into there and I actually, you know, like, you know, how to manage, you know, your heart sink patients, how to, and some of the things that I've learned, especially in general practice, I have learned from there. You know, people say, you know, this is what I did. This is what I did. This is what helped. This is what did not help. This is a holiday destination you can go to and stuff like that. So for me, that's that's my little, you know, <laughs> my little secret. Um, that that medical mom's group is very, very, I love it. I love it. And then the other thing is you can utilize some work support uh, systems. Every department may have its own way of, you know, providing support, support from your colleagues, uh, somebody that you trust at work. 
I'm saying this with a disclaimer sometimes, you know, <laughs> some of the things you share with your work colleagues, sometimes you hear them elsewhere. So be mindful of whoever you're talking to at work, especially things that are deep and things that um, can potentially turn around on you. Be mindful of such things because uh, remember, um, people here can self-report and people here can report you for one, two, three and stuff like that. So be mindful of who you're talking to. It needs to be a trusted source and it needs to be somebody that can support you at the end of the day. The other thing about support is mentorship. Very, very important, I must say. I find, I have found in my workplace, even for me to step up from one job to another, even for me to manage, you know, uh, times where I had, you know, that uh, emotional stress, emotional, you know, uh, feeling that I wasn't, you know, adequate enough to a task. Mentorship, I've had excess, very, very good mentors who have, you know, have reaffirmed me, um, mentors who have, you know, spoken into my life, mentors who continue even up to date to check in and see how are you going, congratulations on these milestones, people that have honestly loved me and honestly supported me in the workplace, in the workplace. So I've been blessed in that way. The other important thing that has to be put in place to ensure that, you know, burnout, and this is especially if the people that are in authority, is organizational strategies. Very important for there to be organizational strategies. I'll give you a quick example. Like, in general practice, um, there are many ways that obviously you can easily, easily get burnt out. But I found that some practices, like how people manage their their practices, how people have team meetings, how people have, you know, practice meetings and stuff like that. And they talk about issues and they talk about, you know, billing, they talk about, you know, difficult patients, they talk about how to manage and having that trust within a practice in that if I'm struggling with a patient, I can swing them to my senior colleague and I'm, I feel comfortable that they will look after the patient and provide me with the support to say, look, I know you're doing the right thing. Maybe you can do one, two, three in addition and stuff like that. People that have mastered general practice and know how the how life works there. And I feel like this has helped me in the past, especially to manage um, burnout um, in, 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 in when, I, when, when I started general practice. And I must say, you know, uh, how general practice is set up is obviously you're, a lot of times you're on your own in your room with the patient. And sometimes, you know, when colleagues just pop in to say hi, when colleagues pop in over lunch break and, you know, you have a good chat there. And also just, you know, when you're blessed enough to have colleagues that will text you and say, can we do brunch together and stuff like that. So having that organizational strategies, like having an end of, uh, end of year meeting where you meet together and just laugh, you know, eat, um, uh, uh, share, you know, challenges and stuff like that, that fosters, um, teamwork that fosters you know um liking for work and that actually fosters and prevents significantly significantly burnout and i must say one of the organizational strategies that should be in place is the ability for you to decide if you want to work part-time if you want to work full-time if you want to work 0 0.7 0 0.5 or even 0 0.2 there are people that actually just work one day half a day um in a week and that seems to work okay for them and their practices actually allow that and then maybe allow as well work from home and doing phone appointments and stuff like that so it's very important to just see what is it at my workplace that i can instigate a change so that you know you feel supported and you feel um, that your interests are looked at the other thing that i must mention is taking time off I cannot reinforce this enough. Having worked in Africa and having seen, I still see up to date a lot of my colleagues. If you look at the roster, a lot of you know people that are obviously immigrants. And I, I please do not take me wrong. I do acknowledge the fact that we have a lot of people that we are supporting. We have family back at home. We have our own families. We have uh, siblings. We have cousins. We have people that we are supporting. But at the end of the day, I think prioritizing you, and, and this is something that will grow on you. It's something that you're not going to do overnight. I mean, um, this is me almost seven, eight years later that I'm now, I'm now learning to say I will work four days in a week and I'm okay with that, all right? Where else in the past I would work almost seven days a week, back to back, sometimes double shift, sometimes, you know, the income, like I said, would be good. But at the end of the day, you feel tired all the time, you're irritable, you're edgy, you are not 
you know you're not a good person to hang around so it's um it's sort of you know picking which one's your bad <laughs> what's your bad and what, what what can you what can you work with so importantly so you can plan you know i always say you know like australians they they are either in a holiday or they are planning one or they've just come from one okay so take time to plan you know for vacation for school holidays to slow down during school holidays uh, and if you do not have money to travel overseas or to travel interstates and something like that you can travel locally you can do camping you can do you can hang out even just at home and you know do things around the house and stuff like that just try and take some time off work take some leave off work say take some study leave off work if you're unwell take sick off from work and stuff like that so remember to look after yourself by you know taking some time off away from work to do other things that are important okay the last thing that i must say is that is important and i've already mentioned it in my previous video was recognize recognize the signs that you're starting to burn out and recognize those signs and do something about it nice and early you know, assess yourself, self-reflect um, uh, on, on what's going on. Ask yourself, am I, are people complaining about me because I am just less productive? Is it because I have lost my, <laughs> my, 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 you know, my gig? Or is it just because I'm starting to feel quite burned out? And, um, and yeah, and recognize as well, you know, when you're starting to feel quite anxious about going into work, it could be just an indicator that you sort of need to take time. And lastly, remember to seek help. Seek help. Seek help from your GP. Seek help from your friends and family. Seek help from your colleagues um, if, you, if they're trustable. Seek help. Importantly, if you need to undergo counseling, if you need to undergo um, career coaching, if you need to go through these things. Take time, take time and look after you tell yourself, take time to manage burnout and take time to know that life can go on <laughs> without you. So you want to try and make sure that that's not happening because you need to look after you before you look after people. You need to fill up first before you fill other people. And remember, we only fill or we only empower from what we have within. From the abundance of what we have, we are able to spread the love. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you will not be among the statistics of burnout and you will seek help. Thank you.